now uh, we get to talk about one of the, I still have, you know, electricity running through me from this event, but the Loser Leave Town event that happened on the weekend, we were there, it was so exciting. Scott, I mean, what can you say about that event? Man, I, I mean, I know this podcast is about the racing and that's what we're here to do, talk about the racers, mm-hmm. but... Man, that was a hell of a lot of fun. And I think just, you know, rewarding for us. We're always getting made fun of at the ESPN studios. People saying, you know, we're the losers. You know, we should leave town. Things like that. But being out there and seeing Mm -hmm. 500 deep of just big, burly men whipping their shirts around. That was, you know, chanting our names. There was nothing sweeter than that. Yeah, and I don't think that many men know the power of a Spaghetti Alfredo uh, cannon. So I'd like to thank the people at Olive Garden and also apologize for some of the things that went on there because uh, looking back on them, they weren't appropriate, but I don't think that yeah, I'm we should have used responsible the for it. We, yeah. Yeah. We didn't know that. We were just loading wet noodles into that cannon. Um, yeah. It was a hell of a lot of fun, though. Yeah. And I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a number of legal, you know, schools of thoughts on this in terms of, you know, these. Well, I, I guess I should say there was, there's been a bit of a lawsuit put against us for this. Uh, a class action one from a, a few people in the front row. And there's a couple of school of thoughts on this. And it basically goes, you know, one people, a lot of people are saying that I should be sued, which I don't agree with because, you know, it's not my canon, it's not my event, and I'm just doing my job. Uh, the second school says ESPN should be sued for whatever reason. I agree with that a little bit more, but not totally. And then I think my favorite school of thought, and I would think, I might even join it because as somebody who is operating the canon, I've been emotionally scarred by this event, but uh, Olive Garden should be sued because, um, you know, that bagless spaghetti Alfredo, the damage it did to people, um, it was because it was too hot. So I think that the spaghetti Alfredo was too hot, and that's a big reason why um, it it burned a lot of people. Um, Somebody got... They got whiplash from throwing their head back so hard because of the burns on, you know, they, they, ah, you know, that kind of situation. So there's a lot of stuff that I think Olive Garden has to answer for, but I hope that they stay a sponsor despite this. Yeah, I mean, normally I have your back, but I, you know, I also, you said there's a lawsuit against us. I, you know, I'm not involved in that, so I'd like to make that clear, but... You know, I think you might bear a little responsibility just Mm -hmm. by the fact that, you know, you kind of, you got the megaphone and you said, who wants to know what it feels like to be my ex-wife? And then, you know, someone in the front row raised his hand Mm -hmm. and you put spaghetti Alfredo cannon between your legs. Yeah. And he got down on his knees. He was grinning (laughs) ear to ear. And from five feet, we were told specifically this cannon can shoot. From 100 feet away, so no mm-hmm. close-range firings. And, you know, you're five feet away from this guy with yeah. the cannon between your legs, and you just shoot it right into his face, and he goes flying backwards. I think his face fell off. I think it got ripped off. Um, I don't think so. And he uh, just went flying backwards. He was okay. And you're laughing your ass off. Mm-hmm. Um, the crowd's cheering. Um, and, yeah, it was... <laughs> I, I think that's probably what they're talking about. It was the, I think, was I, the, uh, I think that yeah. I'm protected under parody law. Parody law. Well, you know, I'm just having fun out there and making jokes. And I think that, you know, just the way that like, that's you know, Adam good. Sandler, you're parodying a situation in which, you know, my, well, we don't need to get, I don't think I can speak. So about, you're saying the parody, like parody laws when you can, you know, you can use like, you know, music from a famous, you know, if you're, if you're changing think, the lyrics to kind of make, but you're saying it because you're like, I think you if know, you situation with your ex-wife and now you can recreate it. So that guy, you're not liable for shooting that guy's face off. Well, I think that it's a parody of the situation. I think, you know, if you, if you look at what SNL has got away with, they've gotten away with a lot worse. So I think that I'll be okay. <laughs> no, there's uh, no arguing way SNL that and, has not, <laughs> they never blew someone's face off. This is that guy was that guy might be dead. I don't even know. We haven't. That's seen editorializing him. this. His he didn't blow his face off. His face is a okay. It's his I don't neck know about that, that. Is so sore. Yep. He's in he's an attraction. <laughs> he can walk. At least he can move his legs and arms. He will be able to walk again. But it's the neck that's the problem. <laughs> 
So I his mean, face I is fine. I just want to say point. that for his. I just want to say that for his family and for for everybody who's worried about him, his face is perfectly fine. Uh, but it wasn't too handsome of a man before this. So, um, <laughs> yeah, this is the worst defense <laughs> argument. I mean, it was a hell of a scene. Everyone was laughing. Everyone was cheering. Um, it was, you know, it was, the guy was so happy, too, to partake in it. But I don't think he knew Big you fan. were actually going to shoot it. I Big think, fan. I think he yeah. thought it was a gag until you pulled the trigger. Yeah, but then, as I say, uh, we're we're good under parody law, in my opinion. So um, I can't afford. we were. <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not sued. Yeah, so. I'm parodying a situation that happened between me and my ex-wife and we're just having fun and whatever happens in the parody happens in the parody. So this is, you know, imagine me before a judge right now arguing this. I think that there's going to be a lot of nodding in the courtroom. The jury is going to be nodding along with me. The judge is going to be nodding along with me and I think it'll be okay. So uh, we'll see if this ends up going to court. I hope it doesn't, but I'm ready with that silver bullet defense. But anyway, yeah. this okay. is, we're talking yeah, about this I mean, for too long. We got to talk yeah, about the racers. Focus on the racers. Let's talk about what happened on the track, yeah. please. So, you know, this was a big day for you. I know that you're you're a big MK1 stan. You are the biggest supporter in the world of this event. So, uh, you know, take a little bit of time to gloat about your three stars hypothesis about Midas running, about all of that kind of stuff. Because, I mean, nothing. This event couldn't have gone better for you. Yeah, I mean, I said Midas left MKS because he was scared of uh, going up against Marky Mark again. And I think, you know, this being the conclusive rubber match, I mean, it doesn't get any more pure than 1v1 on a pure mm-hmm. racing track like MC3. And, I mean, we saw it. It was a sweep. It was a sweep. You know, Midas, he got in his head. He's got those demons. He's, uh, man, there's, we saw him melt down after. And he goes left around that banana. It should have gone to race three, and then anything can happen in sudden death. Yeah. But instead, he goes left. He, he, you know, ruins the race. He's celebrating after. It doesn't even make sense. That guy's so, he didn't know. you know, messed up. And uh, Marky Mark sweeps it. And I think as a traditionalist, you know, a fan of USA, a fan of MK1, it's mm-hmm. sweet. It's sweet. I'm I'm loving it. I, you know, I'm I'm on cloud nine, Mike. Yeah, and I mean, I'm not as big of a of a three stars head as you are, but I think that it's just wonderful anytime that you have to take your hat off and really just sit back and enjoy the race for that Marky Mark is because it definitely gets overshadowed by that back and forth battle we see between Sexy Bacon and Donald Hogg. They're obviously the two elite athletes of the sport. I don't think just in MK1, but in general, period. But I think. You know, Marky Mark's a hell of a racer. It takes a lot of skill, a lot of veteran savvy to be on that podium and be that third star over and over again. And to be quite honest, it just is a testament to his incredible racing. And and it's just nice, as I said, to be able to sit back and, and point out that he's just, he's got some tricks in his bag that most racers don't. And you pointed it out when we were uh, covering the event before the races happened that he's going to have to pull off that third lap magic for him to win. And We saw him do that twice with that red shell going around the first corner and then that red shell going around the final corner. He just had it in the bag. He just always found a way to win, and that's been the story of his career and why he's such a fan favorite. And I mean, this is why the three stars are the preeminent racers, and this is why everyone looks to them because on the biggest stage, they always come through. So, yeah, it was a hell of a weekend. It was a hell of an event for most of us. You know, one guy didn't have quite the the time he was hoping for. but He'll be fine. um, yeah, I also was, think uh, that you shouldn't be able to sue if you recover from the incident. So, um, he better well, recovery is a that's a loaded term. He said his neck is in big trouble. No, I, like no, it. you're putting words in my mouth when you say big trouble. I said that he had a problem with his neck, and that his face yeah. is fine, but he can walk. He can move his legs and arms. Yeah, it's just really yeah, sore. I mean, so I, I tried to give him a visit him in the hospital, sign he some of up. his, you know, casts and things like that. And they didn't let me in, but I think he's doing. Yeah, well, why did you bring the cannon? You thought it was funny. To yeah. Tend again. I mean, yeah. Obviously they weren't going to let you in and you brought the cannon. Yeah. You know, it, well, I brought it. Why do and you still have it? What's that? Why do you still have the cannon? You know, it should have been left there. 
Well, it's, it's fun to have. And, and to be quite honest, I've gotten a, a number of really threatening messages from Olive Garden. They have some fairly intimidating people, but you know, it's really nothing compared to the, the banking people that I'm dealing with. And I use banking quite liberally. So uh, a lot of threats. And to be quite honest, it was just one of those things where it's like I've dealt with so much worse and I'm dealing with so much worse that some Olive Garden thugs aren't going to intimidate me to take away my spaghetti Alfredo cannon. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, hey, great event. Congrats to Marky Mark. Um, MK1's back on top, baby. 